Greetings everyone, so today I want to talk about some sensors that's built into this device right here. Because at one point I used to think that, why do they call these things smartphone? They don't do anything smart. All you do is make phone calls, send texts, listen to music, watch videos, but what makes it smart? So I'm going to cover some sensors that's built into this device right here that makes it a smart device. The first one we're going to cover is the accelerometer sensor. Now this sensor is built in to control the orientation. So when you go into certain apps, you can hold your phone in this direction or that direction and the screen would adjust based on how you put it in that position. Well, the accelerometer is the sensor that makes that happen. So if you're in an app and you notice when you turn it in certain direction is not adjusting, it's because the programmer didn't take advantage of this particular sensor. So it has nothing to do with the phone. So don't blame the phone for not adjusting to your orientation. The next sensor is the gyroscope sensor. Now the gyroscope sensor is built in to make you play like certain games. So if you're playing a racing game, for instance, and you tilt the phone to the right, so the car on the screen can turn right, is because of that gyroscope sensor. It's different from the accelerometer because the accelerometer based on position. You have to be in this position or this position, while the gyroscope is based on tilt. So you can tilt your phone like this or tilt it a little like that and it's going to adjust based on that. It doesn't have to wait to be in that correct position to make that adjustment. Okay, so the next sensor everybody already know about is the compass sensor. The compass sensor is built in to show you a sense of direction, north, south, east, west, and everything in between. The next one is the magneto sensor. It's almost like the compass sensor. The compass sensor gives you a sense of direction. This also pretty much do the same thing, but it has more of a special feature that can detect metal, which is the same sensor that's built into a metal detector that you use to try to find gold and other precious metal. So therefore your phone can be used as a metal detector if the app support it. So the magneto sensor can measure magnetic field and can also tell you which way is north. So it acts just like the compass sensor, the global positioning system, which is also the GPS sensor. This sensor connects the satellite to kind of get a position of where you are on the planet, whether you're walking or driving. The sensor also connects to multiple satellites and try to calculate all that information to get a more accurate data of your position. Now, normally no satellites can be found if you're indoor or it's a dark cloudy day, you know, bad weather. So you probably won't get a good accurate reading then. But one thing for sure, if you lose connection with your service provider and it's a clear day, you will still get your positioning from the global satellites because this sensor doesn't use data on your phone. It doesn't require Wi-Fi or data from your service provider. It's actually connecting to the satellites to get your position. Now, with that being said, because it's doing all these calculation, it actually drains your battery the more you use it. So you will have a shorter battery life based on the usage of the GPS sensor. Okay, so now here's a popular sensor that pretty much everybody like to use these days because it's have an easier way to get into your phone and it's the biometric sensor. The biometric sensor either read your fingerprint or it takes facial recognition to unlock your device. Now there are three kinds of biometric fingerprint sensors. There's optical where it uses light to scan your fingerprint. There's capacitive which uses an electronic capacitor to scan your fingerprint. And there's ultrasonic that uses sound wave to scan your fingerprint. The ultrasonic sensor is the one mainly used in higher end device to scan your fingerprint to unlock your phone. Now the sensor doesn't work alone. There's special software and algorithm running in the background along with the sensor to make your fingerprint and your facial recognition more accurate. Now some device actually have a button for your fingerprint while others like the Samsung phones, the latest versions I should say, have the fingerprint under the glass so you don't have to worry about a button you just need to touch the glass wherever it tells you to place your fingerprint and it will unlock your device the next one is the soli or soli sensor depends on how you pronounce it now this sensor is found in the google pixel now this sensor is basically a radar module it can detect movement around and above the phone so for example if your alarm is going off 
and you move your hand over the phone to mute it, it'll start getting quieter. Or if you pick up your phone, then it will automatically start initiating the face unlock feature. So that's some example of the task that this sensor performs. The next one is the barometer sensor. And this one is the same thing like you hear on the weather. It's designed to measure air pressure. So it's good for measuring weather changes and altitude. The next sensor is the proximity sensor. Now this sensor is the best sensor you want in a device that uses touch as the entire screen. So what the proximity sensor does is every time you're on a phone call and you move the phone up to your face, it turns off the screen because you don't want any unwanted presses while you're on the phone and the phone is right near your face. So this sensor, unlike the other sensors that's built into the phone, this one is built where it's on the outside. So it's located on the top of the phone and it has a light detector to detect when you actually put the phone against your face and you know, everything becomes dark as far as the sensor is concerned. And that's when it knows when to turn off the screen. The next one is the ambient light sensor. Now this sensor detects how much light is in your environment. So if the light is too bright, it'll actually brighten up your screen. Like when you go outside and if the light gets lower, then it will dim your screen like at night when you're in bed and the lights are off to make the screen not so bright when you're trying to look at your phone in the dark. So basically this sensor just automatically adjusts the light up and down based on the environment. Now the iPhone, and I'm not sure if it's in the latest iPhone, I didn't do my homework before I did this video, but I know what they had built into their phone was a moisture sensor. And this sensor was to detect if the phone was submerged in water. So there was a little red indicator on the phone. It'll be either in the headphone jack or the lightning port or the dock connector. There's also a barcode and QR code sensor. This is one of the same kind. This is not two different sensor, but it was designed to read those barcodes and QR code that you scan with your phone camera. So it's not the camera that's doing the heavy lifting here. The camera can see the code, but it's the sensor that actually decode it, which could mean anything. It could be a link to a website or anything else as far as what the code is built for when the sensor reads it. And last but not least, the thermometer sensor. Now this sensor was built not just for reading the temperature in a room, but it was designed to monitor the internal temperature of the device. So if the device get too hot or the battery start overheating, this sensor would actually try to shut down the phone to prevent any further damage. Now I experienced this one time when I had my iPhone and I left it in the car on a hot summer day and I didn't remember. When I went back out, the screen was all black, but the phone was off. I just had to let it get back to room temperature to start working again. But the sensor is also used by app developers to measure the temperature in a room. So there you go. Those are some of the sensors that I wanted to highlight that makes your smartphone smart. It's because of these sensors and the technology that's built in that classify it as smart. Now, even though these sensors are built in, the app developer still have to code the app to make sure that it takes advantage of these sensors. So even though they're there, if they're not being taken advantage of, they're not gonna benefit you even though the sensors are built in. Okay, so I hope this information was helpful to you. It's just a little FYI, a little information if you're just curious about these things. If this information was intriguing to you, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Thanks for taking the time for watching. Have a good one and I'll see you next time.